What's going on guys? Welcome back to the channel. This time we're working on a 2006 Chrysler Town & Country. This one was brought to me with a complaint of no power steering. Owner took it to Pet Boys where they diagnosed the power steering rack is going out. I feel like that's pretty common on these uh, Chrysler vans around this time period. So I have one ordered up from a local parts store and figured for last we'll check the front end and see if there's anything else going on. And uh, sure enough, I kind of opened a Pandora's box. So I'm gonna show you what's going on at the front end. Um, it needs quite a lot of attention on the front suspension, struts, stabilizer links, uh, axle shaft, and lower control arm. So I'm gonna cover that in a different video. And then this one will probably focus on just the uh, power steering rack. But let me show you what we got going on here. So I grab the front wheel. I do have it jacked up slightly. Uh, side to side here, a fair amount of play, and if we come over to the other side here, this is my cramp corner, I don't love working over here, Oop, took some rust off, we got a lot of play there, so let me get the uh, camera underneath with the light and I'll show you what we got going on. Alright, so coming up to the left front wheel. The tires are pretty bold too. I'm going to recommend at least two new tires. You can see those are down to the wear bars. Um, come up to the left front wheel. I'm going to sneak you guys in here. And that's the rear bushing for the lower control arm. You can see if I shake the wheel side to side, I don't know how much that's really translating to the camera, but there's a fair amount of play. But what's funny is I actually looked further up the control arm and you can see we have part of the bushing actually shaved itself off and worked its way up the control arm. I've never seeing the bushing come half apart and work its way up the arm like that. So definitely at least need the arm on this side. I like doing them in the pairs. If we come around to the other side here, I don't know if you can see that, but when we shake the tire, got a little bit of play in that lower ball joint, which is not great. And then as I'm taking a closer look, I find this outer boot for the CV shaft, the axle shaft is torn apart. And I noticed this guy sitting up here too, that's part of the coil spring from the strut. It's actually broken off the seat and pushed down past the seat of the struts. So that's why I'm recommending to do two struts, uh, lower control arms and the axle shaft. The axle shaft, you could maybe get away with doing just the boot, but we don't know how long that's been exposed to elements like that. And I'm gonna have half of it apart anyway. I can get one pretty cheap, maybe like 50 bucks off of a uh, Rock Auto, so it's it's worth uh, just replacing it while we have all the suspension apart. Now, like I said, I'm gonna cover all the front suspension stuff in a different video, um, but I do wanna address it at the same time because I was gonna try to get away with just doing the uh, steering rack, but when you finish the steering rack, you ideally need to do an alignment afterwards. And with everything in the front suspension being as loose and worn out as it is, you're not really going to get an accurate alignment because everything is going to be kind of shifting around as they're adjusting it. So we really need to have the front end as solid as possible to get an accurate alignment and to make it worth our time and money. So I'm going to take care of all that. Um, we'll circle back and get the alignment done at the end of the, uh, this video. Uh, but for now, let's get the wheels off and we'll get started on the steering rack. So first thing I might do as a starting point would be to come to our steering reservoir here and actually empty out the fluid. Uh, I have a big kind of syringe looking thing uh, with a tube that you can run down there and just kind of pull the plunger, it'll suck the fluid right out. But this thing's leaking so bad, it pretty much drew, uh, drained itself on the drive over here. So that saves us a step there. As you can see, we're leaking out pretty good from the passenger side of the rack. So I have uh, plenty of cardboard down to catch all that because I don't want to mess up the garage floor and uh, so with that done I know there's a few main steps that we need to do to get this rack off there is this plate down here that uh, kind of pulls together uh, the subframe or k-frame whatever they use on these vans all the various suspension components uh, that has to come off to get access uh, that will come off anyway to get our lower control arm so we'll do kind of a two for deal there and then the power steering lines have to come off at the top of the power steering rack. And then we have to disconnect it from the 
steering shaft inside the car. I think there's a couple different ways to do that. I don't know which one's easier. I'm going to take a look when we get to that point. But I actually start with, I might actually start with uh, looking at that first, get the hard stuff out of the way. And then we have to disconnect the outer tie rod ends to separate it from the knuckles. And I think there's uh, two or three bolts that hold it to the car. That will probably be the last step. So we're down on the driver's side footwell, and right here is the steering shaft that connects to the power steering rack. If we follow it up top here, you can see there is a nut that will disconnect it from the steering wheel. That might be the easier route to go, uh, to disconnect it, but then we have to feed this whole shaft through the opening in the, uh, the firewall there. So I'm going to take this boot back and see what we have to work with. I know there's some sort of roll pin that locks it in place. We're gonna pull our carpet back. And this boot here is pretty badly torn up. If you're keeping your car long-term, I would definitely recommend replacing it. Uh, this thing's got about 190,000 miles on it and we're just trying to get it back on the road. So I'm not gonna sweat it too much right now. Uh, if they wanna replace it at a later time, we could probably do that. But uh, it looks like this is held on by two or three 10, 10 millimeter screws. So we're gonna pull those out and see what we're working with. So these screws are giving me such a hard time coming out that I've actually had to get a pry bar underneath this boot. And I had to put some upward pressure on it. I think maybe the metal's starting to rust out behind the screws, but two of them are not cooperating. So I'm gonna put some upward pressure on it. Always spin these last, this last one out. That looks like it did the trick. So now we got those three out. Let's go ahead and pull this boot back, see what we're working with. There we go. Let's see if we can push this back up past the brake pedal, maybe get some more space. Would be nice. So it was a small pain to get that boot out of the way, but I'm glad we did because now we can see we have pretty clear access to both uh, lines there, which you should be able to disconnect through this opening. And then down here is our roll pin. I rotate the steering ever so slightly. You can see it's sticking out on the other side. So what we need to do is take a hammer and a punch to that left side and it should slide out the other side. Uh, once that's disconnected, we have to make sure to get our steering wheel dead center and keep it in that position because if the steering wheel rotates at all while it's disconnected from the power steering rack, it will damage the clock spring inside the steering wheel. And that can affect things like your airbag, uh, turn signals, horn, things like that. Maybe not the turn signals, but it will affect some of your electronics. So uh, make sure you secure the wheel, do whatever you have to, don't touch it, don't move it. And uh, I'll go ahead and hammer out that roll pin. We'll see if we can get those lines disconnected or at least loose. I might not take them out all the way because I want to take that uh, plate off underneath without getting rained on by power steering fluid. So we'll see if we can break those free, get that pin out and we'll be good to go. You might wanna make sure we take care of getting this roll pin out because I don't wanna destroy it. Need to reuse it, obviously. I don't have one handy. So I wanna try to find a punch as big as a roll pin. That's just about out. We'll go ahead and pull the pin out. Of course that dropped down onto the floor, but I'll grab it later. But now that the pin's out, we're gonna go ahead and center our wheel like so. And we're gonna make sure that it stays there for the rest of the repair until we get this put back together. Now there's not a lot of access to get swing, swinging room for the power steering lines, but I have a feeling it's more than you're gonna get underneath. So I have my 18 millimeter flare wrench or crow's foot wrench and uh, you can get on the top one to at least break it free, so that's good. And I'm probably gonna get in here maybe with a stubby wrench or something to, to loosen it completely. But at least I know I can get that top one off. There's some rust fighting me on the flare to or the flare itself, the nut. So 
now that I can get that top one off, I should be able to get access to the bottom one once that top line's off. Work them both free, and then uh, I'm gonna hold off on that, like I said, so I don't have to deal with the fluid underneath. So now that everything's good inside the car, we're gonna focus our efforts underneath. Coming underneath the van, this is the plate that we're after that has to come out to get access to the uh, steering rack. You can see there's quite a bit of hardware connected to it. We've got some smaller bolts. Sorry. Smaller bolts, there's a couple here. It looks like they hold a bracket for maybe, I think it's a purge solenoid. We have the uh, evaporative emissions canister sitting right there, so that wouldn't surprise me. Uh, the one bolt back there for this. I think that's one of the power steering hoses in the back. Uh, so once we get some of the smaller stuff out of the way, there's then several big bolts. I think, uh, I don't know if these are 18, 19. Uh, I'm not sure exactly what size they are, but two here. Uh, looks like we got one of the cradle mounts going right through the plate as well. Uh, one back here, a couple smaller ones for the control arm. And yeah, looks like about the same thing on, on both sides. So we'll go ahead and get all those uh, all the hardware off, drop this plate down, make sure all the, uh, the little stuff there, the power steering cooler, this bracket here are all secure and out of the way. And then uh, we should have a better idea how to get access to our rack from there. Of course, the first two bolts I gotta take out are fighting me like crazy, so I'm gonna try my best to kind of nurse these out so we don't break anything. I like using the hand ratchet to do this before resorting to an impact or anything just to minimize the damage. Kind of slowly work it back and forth. I think it's like a 50-50 chance whether this one's gonna actually come free or if it's gonna break. Getting a little bit of movement out of it. I don't know if it's good movement or not. Surprised how rusty this is for how oily everything is under here. It's been leaking oil for quite some time. So you think all this stuff would be pretty well lubricated. Apparently the rust got to it first. I feel like that one's going to cooperate with us. Let's see if the one next to it will play ball too. This is a sign of things to come. This is going to be a long night. All right, that sucked, but we got it done, so. And it's one less piece of hardware we have to replace. So these other smaller ones here, I'm going to go ahead and take care of those. You guys don't want to see me struggle with those. So I'll take care of the smaller stuff. We'll go ahead and zip off the uh, bigger hardware here and we'll be in good shape. I got two 15 millimeters here for the control arm bushing. Okay, let's try that again. After that, we have, looks like, 
one, two, three, four, twenty-one. I'm sorry, five twenty-one millimeters on each side, or at least on this side. Might be one less on the other side, but we'll go ahead and pull all these off. And then there's some smaller ones in the middle there. It might be eighteen or nineteen. Alright guys, fair warning, I'm going to give you a heads up here. These two bolts in the back here that go through the, I think it's a subframe and up into the body. If you live in the rust belt and your van is nearly as crusty as this one, you can see this has got a lot of rust on it. Brace yourself because these two bolts are going to suck. I spent about an hour and a half just trying to get these two back bolts out because they're so badly rusted where they go up into the body. Now, the nice thing is if you go on the inside kind of hard to demonstrate that, but if you go up on the inside here, behind the frame rail or the part of the body there, there is an opening where you can spray in some WD-40 or whatever penetrating oil you use to kind of loosen things up and help you out a little bit. So if you're going to be doing this job, it might not hurt to do that the day before. If you can get a mirror up in there, you'll see the threads that I'm talking about. The top part of the bolt sitting out in the open, probably why it's so rusted to begin with. Um, but I took a big breaker bar. I tried two impacts, neither of them touched it. So I ended up taking a breaker bar with a 21 mil socket on the end and just very carefully move it back and forth because if you keep trying to pull on it, you'll just shear the head right off. And you can see the shaft on this one is not in awesome shape. If, uh, if I was keeping this van long term, I might want to replace those, but we're, we'll probably be lucky to get another couple of years out of it with the body the way it is. So. Uh, instead of replacing these, I'm just going to clean these out the best I can. We'll put some anti-seize on the threads, and we're just going to be super careful putting them back in. So yeah, other than that, uh, breaker bar on those, I had to take the handle from my jack to get a little extra leverage on it, and just kind of work them back and forth slowly till they come out, and uh, bring some patience with you, because it'll take a minute. But now that those two are out, it should be pretty smooth sailing. I'm going to go ahead and get rid of the rest of these uh, 21 mils, I think there's a couple 18 mils on the inside. So now we have all the 15 and 21 millimeter bolts taken care of. Uh, we're gonna grab this one little 18 on the front. That should be everything for this side. And then we'll go over to the other side. Um, I'm not gonna record the other side because everything over there is covered in power steering fluid. And it's gonna get messy and I wanna keep my camera on the line of fire. So I'm gonna go ahead and finish this side, take everything off there. And then I put, um, you might see this, I put the 15 mil for the uh, bushing back up in there just to keep the plate from hitting the ground. Um, that way I can kind of take it down by hand once I get everything loose. All right, so I'm gonna take out this 15 mil on this side. And with that, all the hardware is out and it's still not coming. So we're gonna grab our pry bar here, just kind of pry around the perimeter. I think it's still stuck on towards the back here where these insulators are going to the subframe so we'll just try to break the bond there probably some rust and corrosion kind of gluing everything together So with this plate off, we have pretty good access to the power steering rack now, and we can get a little better idea of what we have to do to get it out. I wasn't sure, you can see this little um, solenoid underneath. I'm, like I said, I think that's a purge solenoid for the emission system. Not 100% sure, but um, that is probably gonna have to come out of the way because you can see it's sitting directly below the rack. Um, so we're probably gonna wanna at least move that out of the way, if not remove it completely. 
uh, just to give us some more swinging room with the rack. There is on the front side of it over here, a one hose and electrical connector. So I'm hoping maybe if I undo those, I can kind of just swing it down out of the way to get some room. But other than that, there's two bolts. Looks like holding the rack up into the underside of the body. Of course, we have our two uh, steering lines on this side of the vehicle. And then uh, we still have to disconnect the outer tire right ends. I might save that for last. Um, just because we'll probably have to beat on them to get them out. It'll be a nice uh, stress reliever after going through all this uh, craziness with the rust on the bolts and everything. But hopefully that is the end of our uphill battle on this thing. Um, I don't can't imagine it getting much rustier and much more difficult than this. I think our biggest uh, battle was these two rear bolts on that um, subframe plate. So if you can get through those, hopefully uh, it'll be all kind of downhill from there and it'll just coast the rest of the way. Probably just marked myself now that I said that. <laughs> so we'll see what happens. But uh, if you're keeping this car long term, um, now that you have that plate off, it might be a good time to paint that up and uh, you know get it looking fresh and maybe prolong the life of it. And uh, this is also a perfect time. You can see these control arms are actually sandwiched between the subframe and that plate. So if your control arms are questionable condition of uh, you know in any way whatsoever, now would be a perfect time to replace those. And uh, we're actually going to end up doing struts and stabilizer links on this thing as well. So I think when I get those lower control arms out, um, we're going to go ahead and disconnect the stabilizer links at the tops. And that way we'll have enough room. We can swing the arm of the stabilizer bar all the way down and uh, just blast off those lower nuts without too much trouble. So, um, yeah, we're going to go ahead and get that uh, solenoid out of the way and we'll go from there. I was able to get that solenoid disconnected. Uh, I misspoke, there's actually just the one electrical connector on that left side, and then on the right side there's two hoses. So if you want, you can do undo both hoses, just take it out of the car altogether. But I think at least now, we have a pretty straight shot coming down out of the car. We'll just have to watch that power steering cooler in the back. So, next step is gonna be loosening everything at the tie rod ends. Um, I've already got the jam nut free here. And, of course, on the inner ones, they don't have any flats for a wrench. They just have this goofy uh, pipe wrench, vice grip style. I don't have anything that's really grabbing it that well. So, what I want to do, it's not vital to get everything kind of loosened up. But uh, what we really need to do is kind of get this outer tie rod end off and uh, match the length uh, where the jam nut's sitting so we can kind of dial in our toe. Um, if we don't get the toe even remotely close, the car's not really going to be that drivable even short term to go to uh, alignment you know, shop. So we want to get it as close as we can. Obviously I recommend doing alignment anyway after the fact, uh, but what I'm probably gonna have to do, got the jam nut moving, put the inner tie rod end seized inside of the outer tie rod end, despite the fact that it's been replaced. I'm probably gonna have to heat this up here and uh, see if I can break it free since I can't really get any leverage on the inner. So I'll grab a uh, butane torch. I don't have access to oxyacetylene or anything heavy duty like that. So. Well, to see what we can do and try to do our best with that. Okay, a jam nut is free. lucky on that one as you can see I don't have vice grips that fit but <coughs> oh ooh, smoky uh I don't have vice grips that fit but we got it heated up enough that these regular uh slip joint pliers work pretty well so I got it moving pretty well uh once this cools down I'll spray down a little WD-40 just to make sure I can get it apart again but I'm gonna go ahead and run this back down once I spray it to where the jam nut's sitting so everything's kind of back to where it was and then uh we're good to take off this castle nut beat the outer tie rod off sorry beat the outer tie rod end off and uh once we take those off we should have more room to get the uh, rack out and after that all we got to do is remove our two lines the two bolts and we should be ready to rock and roll
we're just going to go ahead and snip it down as much as we can. And just zip off the rest with the wrench. You can see, thanks to our efforts, we can just roll this off by hand now. Just make sure you give it time to cool down. This is actually a little warm through my gloves, but it's manageable. And then just make sure to leave that jam nut alone so we have some sort of indicator as to where to line up our jam nut and tie right ends on the new rack. All right, guys, I have a bit of a confession to make. I thought I could outsmart the system and not take out this uh, emissions canister in order to do this power steering rack, but I was gravely mistaken. Um, I ended up taking it out because I couldn't get to the bolt, or I'm sorry, the nut that's on the other end of the uh, power steering rack. You can see where my wrench is attached there. It's a better lighting going on. So this is really the only feasible way to get to it is to take this uh, emissions canister out. Uh, they're not a lot holding it in. I think there's one 10, 10 millimeter bolt at the back and then three that attached to the uh, subframe here. There's one little pedestal there, you can see. Uh, but three bolts for this little cage that it's mounted to. And that'll drop right out of the way and leave the back hoses attached. But now with that out of the way, you can see not only do I have access to that nut for the mounting uh, bolt for the power steering rack, but I also have access to the two lines that I was struggling with up top. So I'm gonna splice this into the video ahead of time, try to save you some uh, uh, headache. But uh, yeah, definitely take the emissions canister out first. It's going to make your life a lot easier in the long run. All right, guys, we're back inside on the uh, driver's side footwell where we have the opening through the firewall, the steering shaft. And um, you can see our two lines there on the right-hand side of the power steering rack. So I'm going to go ahead and crack those free. I have a drain pan set up underneath roughly in that area where the lines are. And I'll have to move the camera out of the way because there's not enough room to get in there with the wrench and keep the camera in place. But uh, I'll go ahead and loosen those two lines, uh, drain it out as much as possible. And then it um, should be good just to grab those two bolts and get the rack out. All right, guys, it was a bit of a struggle, but I got those two lines off. Um, as you can see, I ended up disconnecting the shaft, uh, the interme intermediate steering shaft. There's enough room here. The shaft kind of telescopes in and out that you can lift it straight back and kind of up and over the gas pedal, get it out of the way. Um, I really don't see how you can get your hand in there or wrench in there without doing that. So probably uh, best to do that. Um, at this point, like I said before, be careful, keep the steering wheel straight. Now you don't have to be like laser centered when you put it back on there is a flat here to match one on the uh, input shaft here of the steering rack so as long as those two flats line up and you know the rack is pretty centered and the steering wheel hasn't moved at all we'll be in good shape when we go to put it back together so now that those two power steering lines are off the only thing left to do is to hit the two bolts underneath and pull it out of the car Sorry to lie to you again guys, I actually found out there's three sets of uh, nuts and bolts holding this rack to the car. So you're going to have two uh, 18 millimeter nuts and bolts on the passenger side, 
right next to each other. And then there's one 21 millimeter on this side that I showed you uh, behind that EVAP canister. So all, everything is uh, loose. I have all the hardware out. I have a zip tie holding uh, the driver's side of the rack here just to keep it from falling. But I think we're ready. I can cut that zip tie and we'll work the rack out of the car. Your best bet is probably to slide it towards the passenger side of the car since there's less hardware on that side of the rack to work with. Plus when you dip down the path, or uh, sorry, the driver's side here is going to start draining out what fluid is left on the rack. So, got the driver's side down. Let's go ahead and get the passenger side work free. And there it is. So here you see I have the new rack lined up next to the old rack. Um, I was hoping the new rack was going to come with jam nuts so I could kind of dial in the toe before I uh, put it in the car, but unfortunately it didn't. But thankfully, I got a new set of outer tie right ends that did come with jam nuts. So uh, it's something to look out for when you're replacing this rack. I did kind of eyeball the old and new uh, outer tie right ends. They look like they're about the same dimension. So... I think as long as I kind of butt up the outer side of the jam nut to meet up with the outer side of the old one, we should be pretty much in the ballpark of where we were uh, before we took it all apart. So um, as long as the jam nuts are sitting about the same position, then uh, we can screw on the outer tie right ends when we get the rack into the car. Uh, we should be in good shape there. I might throw a little grease on these threads um, just to make it easy for alignments down the road. However, the only other thing to keep an eye out for is make sure you have new O-rings these will go on the ends of your power steering hoses where they go into the rack here. So you want to make sure to change those out and that they're not doubled up or damaged or anything like that. Um, what I think I might do when I reinstall it is this mounting hole that goes on the driver's side. I'm going to uh, do the same thing I did when I took out the old one and probably zip tie that one in place. Then I can start these two on the uh, passenger side. So that way, I, since I'm one man show, I can just kind of do one side at a time. So. I'm going to go ahead and throw this new rack in. Uh, any quick pointers, putting it back together that I think are noteworthy, I'll uh, record those for the most part. It's just reverse of the uh, removal procedure. And then, uh, yeah, I'll check in with you guys later. Quick note on the power steering lines. Um, when you're installing them into the power steering rack, obviously you want to do it by hand. It's really the only way to do it. But uh, make sure that you've got them threaded in as much as possible before you take a wrench to them. You want to make sure that they are dead centered in the hole before you start uh, tightening them down in, in any way, shape, or form. Because if, uh, you know, we've come this far replacing the rack, and if we get lazy now and cross-thread any of those fittings or anything like that, then we're going to be in really bad shape. The rack's got to come back out. you got to exchange it and all that good stuff. So it was a bit of a process trying to get both lines lined up and tightened down. I kind of did a combination from underneath the car, snaking my arm up from where that emissions box was, uh, he even tried coming down through the top of the engine bay, snaking around the top of the transmission, and also through this opening here in the uh, interior floor on the driver's side. So between a combination of those, basically you just have to kind of wiggle the line around. Um, maybe get two hands on there, one hand on the, the flare nut and one hand on the tube, just enough to, uh, to get started. So now that we have those snug down, uh, next thing I'm going to do is uh, reattach this intermediate steering shaft. And uh, it looks like the flat on the rack and pinion is a little off-center from where I wanted it to be compared to the uh, the shaft here. So I'm going to take a look at that. I think maybe, I know the steering wheel hasn't moved at all, so maybe the rack maybe got bumped when I was installing it. I think it's possible that I may just have to give a quarter turn to the left to, to get them to line up. But um, that flat should let you know as long as the rack's kind of, you know, centered as best you can by eye and the steering wheel hasn't moved at all, then I... You should be in the neighborhood and be able to, to just slide it right on the, the input shaft there. Also, I'm not entirely sure what that black plastic collar does on the uh, top of the power steering rack, but I transferred it over from the old one. I think it might interface with the intermediate steering shaft, maybe to keep dust out or 
uh, form some kind of seal. So I, I figured best practice will just transfer it over to the new one. And of course, make sure when you're putting the uh, intermediate steering shaft back on that you get it down all the way. You want um, you want the hole on the top part of the shaft there where the roll pin goes into to interface with that little notch and the uh, input shaft from the rack and pinion. So make sure it's down all the way. I, obviously, if you're not lined up 100%, I don't even think the roll pin would go in. But just a uh, word of caution when you're putting it back together. So with the rack bolted to the car, uh, we have the lines back on and the intermediate shaft reattached at the top. So I think the next step is to reattach this uh, bracket here. And remember, we've got all the various hardware, uh, 215 mils, I think 118 mil, and the rest are 21 millimeters. Um, say two, maybe four, 415 mils. Yeah, four. Four all together. Um, and then we've got, obviously, our EVAP canister, uh, purge solenoid that bolts to it power steering cooler and I believe there is a bracket for one of the power steering hoses so just kind of take note of what you're taking off uh, before we get to this point just remember everything's got to go back together so I kind of jumped ahead you can see I got everything back together wheels are back on the car we've got it back on the ground um, before I did all that before I got the wheels back on and took it off the jack stands I did do a bleeding procedure it is a lot easier to do obviously with the front end in the air um basically all you do is you come to your power steering reservoir here and there's a fill range on the side i just fill it to the top of that fill range uh with fluid and then before you even start the car or run it you just uh, turn the steering wheel manually side to side i think the first time you do it you're going to have to refill the power steering fluid uh, once you go a full rotation each direction lock to lock and then the more you do it, the less you'll have to fill it up uh, because you're purging out the air. But that's a nice way to kind of prime the system, I guess you could say, is uh, basically bleed it like you normally would, but do it before the engine's running. Uh, otherwise, you're going to get a lot of air getting circulated, uh, make a lot more noise, and might splash out of the reservoir. So that kind of uh, simplifies things a little bit. So I do that maybe at least 10 to 15 times. Uh, and then once you realize that the fluid's not really dropping down anymore, Chances are you got a pretty good prime going on in the system. You can start the engine, run it, do the same thing. Just run the wheel side to side 15, 20 times, however long it takes. Uh, you might hear some buzzing from the power steering pump uh, as air pockets work their way out of the system. That's totally normal. And then uh, the only other thing you want to do is pop your head underneath the car and make sure there's nothing dripping. Um, I replace the hoses for the power steering cooler that are underneath bolted to the bracket. So that was one of my main causes or main things that I wanted to check, make sure that they weren't leaking. So everything looks good uh, there. We've got the fluid prime topped off. Uh, everything's bled out. And of course, at that point, then the only thing left to do is uh, wrap the car up, put the wheels back on it and take it for a test drive and see how it handles. Now I'm not going to get too much into aligning the power steering rack. I had an approach that I thought was going to be pretty bulletproof. Basically I took a uh, digital caliper and I kept the jam nuts where they were on the old rack spun off the outer tie rods and took those off and then I took the caliper and I measured to the end of the inner tie rod end to the inside of the jam nut and I measured that distance and then I set that distance to the new jam nuts on the inside on the new rack because I put the two racks next to each other it looked like everything was the same uh, length or same width just by the eye um, they looked like they were almost the exact same distance and everything like that and the jam nuts were all butted up exact same distance so uh, I kept it that way I thought I was going to be in the neighborhood but by that point then I hooked up the outer tie rod ends to the knuckles and ran into an issue where both front wheels were actually towed out pretty badly they're pointing away from each other uh, I, don't, I have no idea how that's possible I thought I took pretty exact measurements um, the only thing I think I could have done differently is measured the uh, threads from the jam nuts to the uh, end of the outer tie rod end or maybe the turns of the uh, outer tie rods before I put them on um, I could have even lined them up next to each other like you'll see in the video that link but uh, basically at this point just to make the car drivable because the way it was it, I don't think I would have been able to even drive it out of the driveway let alone down the street so I just kind of try to stand next to it eyeball it the best I could and uh, just turn them until the wheels kind of came in on both sides to the point where they weren't gonna you know make the car undrivable or I was going to be wrestling the steering wheel to the alignment shop. My goal is, uh, there's an alignment shop maybe a mile from my house. My goal is to get it in the neighborhood where I can drive it safely, uh, maybe on back roads. Um, 
worst case scenario, if you can't get it even remotely close, it's not worth risking it driving on public roads. Uh, especially during busier hours, you might look into having it towed to wherever shop you're going to have the alignment done. Uh, just, just some food for thought. So, All right, guys, so I had a chance to drive the car. Um, everything looks really promising. I didn't get a chance to drive it very far because, unfortunately, I got about a half a block down the street, and I started noticing a very loud clunking noise, uh, so it's just a very sinking feeling when you put all this work into the front end. Um, like I said, I'm going to be replacing the entire front end. I've already done strut stabilizer links, control arms, and an axle shaft. So uh, very frustrated, but I pulled the car back in immediately, set up the camera underneath, and kind of rocked it side to side. I grabbed the top of the door frame. That's a nice trick I like to do. Uh, pretty good for checking stabilizer links, any play in those. And uh, here, if I see if I grab the fender and rock it a little bit. Hopefully you can hear that noise. But um, I, like I said, I set the video up or camera up underneath and did that. And there's nothing obvious in the video that was loose. So what I... I did is I actually got my hand inside on top of the strut tower and as I rock it side to side you can feel the nut that holds the strut rod to the uh, new strut mount. It was left loose from the factory because uh, I got complete quick struts. They come with the strut spring and turn plate. So unfortunately somebody uh, got lazy, didn't tighten it down all the way. I got lazy. I didn't triple check it before I put it on. So um basically left with two options. We got to take the strut back off because I can, there's no access with the uh, wiper cowl sitting on top of it. Um, I don't really feel like taking the suspension back apart. I've kind of had my fill doing that and somebody's borrowed my floor jack. So I think what I'm going to try to do instead is take off this wiper cowl. Should be as simple as pulling off the uh, wiper blades, this top plate here. I know there's a hose for the washer solvent wiring harness and then taking out that lower part. I'm really hoping, fingers crossed, that I can get my impact on top of that nut and just zip it down really quick and tighten it up and we'll be good to go. Because if I have to pull the strut back out of this car, I'm not going to be a happy camper. So let me, uh, I'll get it all apart and then hopefully at that point I can show you what's going on. I'll show you guys a little trick here, removing these uh, wiper arms. Um, they do make special wiper arm removal tools. They're basically like a fork. They go underneath here and then they have like a little spindle up top that you screw and it pulls up from the bottom while pushing down the post here. It'll pop the arm off. Um, I would think after all these years I would have one, but I've never managed to get my hands on one because I always forget to buy one. So we're gonna try a little trick here. So I've taken the nut off already. Um, I've tried pulling the arm up like so, and you just kind of gently torque it back and forth um, just to see if it'll break free. As you can see, nothing's doing there. So what I'm gonna do is take my pair of uh, vice grips here and I want to be careful. I don't want to get too crazy of an attack angle inside the threads there and risk damaging anything. But I'm going to put one part underneath the arm. Let's see if I can't nestle it inside the top of the nut there. Yeah, this doesn't have to be super tight, but just enough to put some pressure on the arm. And then we're going to bring up our wiper arm. And work it back and forth. This arm's gonna make a liar out of me. Aha! Pop is what you're listening for. Now, go ahead and get this nut back off. We are home free. There you have it. Alright guys, got that wiper cowl off. If we look, I don't know if you can see that on the driver's side. We've got a good several threads on that uh, nut for the strut mount. Uh, sitting on top of the nut. And then if we look to this side, it starts the brush crunching. You see there's no noise and really no movement there. I know I'm not showing up the best, but if we come to this side, you can see that nut is barely on there. If we rock this side, I don't know if it's really coming through on the camera, but basically that nut is bouncing off the top of the strut plate making our noise. So 
All right, so my original plan didn't work, which is fine because it was a weird plan anyway, but uh, I uh, had to take these needle nose pliers and just kind of jam them in there the best I could. Can't see anything my fat wrist in the way. Uh, yeah, basically jam them in there and try to grab the size of that nut the best I can while also finagling on um, ratchet on the strut rod. And I had to do a uh, left turn on this since we're going the opposite direction, we're holding the nut still, feed it up into the nut. Basically enough to the point where the nut was snug on the top of the uh, strut mount plate. Tap it with the impact real quick to get it nice and tight. And then uh, I didn't do exact torque specs. I'm not sure if that's possible in this situation, but I did take a uh, longer ratchet and kind of tugged down both sides real quick just to make sure they weren't moving. So they are nice and snug, not over tightened and not loose. So. And, oh, best part is, too, if we rock the car, no clunking noise. So I'm feeling like I got really lucky here just now. I hope if you guys are in a similar situation, you get just as lucky as I do. But words of the wise, if you're putting in new quick struts, always check those nuts beforehand. Don't trust that the uh, guy before you put them on from the factory. So I'm going to put this wiper call back on, and then we're going to take it for a test drive. Fingers crossed that's the last of our issues and then we can put this project to bed. All right, so far so good. I've made it a little further than the half block I made it before and I don't hear any clunking noises. Uh, steering, you probably can't see because it's dark, but steering wheel is actually not too bad. A little off center to the right, but uh, tomorrow morning we'll take this up to the alignment shot, let them, let them work their magic. Um, but all in all, I think we're good to go. I'm feeling pretty good finally. We got this wrapped up. I have spent probably on and off over a week and a half trying to get this thing wrapped up between taking care of personal business and going out of town for a few days and just all the headaches I ran into. So this thing I think is good. We're gonna we're gonna let bygones be bygones. Um, I hope this video was helpful to you guys. The uh, honestly the two biggest things I can give you a heads up on if you're doing this, uh, especially if you live in the Rust Belt, those uh, flare lines or the flare tubes at the end of the lines where they attach to the rack uh, those are hard those are very hard to get to there's three different ways you can get to them and none of them are really that great uh, probably the best way is like I showed going in through the back side of the rack uh, when you take out the emissions canister and the other biggest hurdle I faced was those two subframe bolts uh, so bring plenty bring your a-game and bring plenty of patience when you're working on those two items if you can get through those two little hurdles the rest of it really not too bad so uh if you guys are tackling this project yourself i hope this video was helpful if it was please consider giving it a like and subscribing to the channel and best of luck to you guys we'll see you next time